Yeah, buddy, you're going to prove yourself to your man. Now, my name is Patricia Love from Love Healing Hearts, and I want to share with you a little tidbit about a woman I knew. This woman was very, very pretty. She was young. She was attractive. She married a man who was young and eh, eh, semi-attractive. I didn't think he looked like much, but to her, he was the cat's meow. Oh, that's a real grandma expression there. But listen to this. That's even old for me, you guys. Cat's meow. But anyway, this is what happened. She married this man because she was enticed, intrigued, enchanted, hot and bothered, turned on. She had to have that, whatever that was. Anyway, so she gets this man. He gets her, and they're married. And bang a lang, boy, it's on now, buddy. And she just, she's just enthralled by her love. She's enthralled by her man. She's going to be the best wife and the best woman he ever had. And one day, she fixes him a meal. Now, wait, before I go further, this woman has long, pretty hair. She puts my hair to shame. I look like I got a bob, a little short crew, crew cut compared to her hair. She had this long, beautiful hair, okay? She had beautiful, satiny skin, brown. She was a brown-skinned woman, very pretty, very pretty skin. Very pretty heart. She was tender. She was kind. She was good. She was gentle. She was thoughtful and considerate. But she bought in to this man of hers. She thought he was a knight in shining armor. He turned out to be the wicked witch or the wicked warlock of the West. Whoa! All of a sudden, after all the romance, there comes a butt whooping out of nowhere, huh? She's in shock, but he apologizes. He sheds a few crocodile tears. He makes love to her. And oh, the romance has begun again. And she forgives because she's so kind and tenderhearted like many of you. And he makes love to her, and he charms her all over again. And now she's locked in a little deeper. He just had a bad moment, a bad episode. But she is going to save him. She's, she's going to love him to his happiness, to, to ecstasy. And she's going to show him what her love can do to fix him. Another butt whooping. And this goes on, butt whooping, apology, love making, honeymoon, butt whooping, apology, love making, honeymoon, and this goes on for ten years, twenty years, thirty years, forty years. It gets so crazy that he puts her out in the street in her underwear, in the dead of winter, where all the neighbors can see it. And she's on her knees begging him to let her stay. Is that locked in or what? Is that sick or what? Now listen, remember I said all that beautiful long hair and all that pretty skin? Yeah. Well, my neighbor told me after we moved out here to California that three years after we left, she died. She said during those three years, he beat her mercilessly, beat her all out in the streets in her underwear. Didn't matter if it was summer, spring, or winter. And she would always beg for him to let her stay. I don't know what she thought she was going to do for him. But he sure wasn't doing anything for her, but sucking the life out of her, beating the life out of her. All that pretty long hair, 
I mean, it was long. It just got choppy and choppy and choppy. And she looked like a little rag doll with sprigs sticking out of her head. Her skin was so drawn and so droopy and she looked so worn and beaten down. And her skin was, was all saggy, like skin falling off of a skeleton. And there was no place on her legs where there were not varicose veins from extensive standing, walking. He had a car, but he never drove her anywhere. But he beat her. Oh, he beat her. And he beat her, and he beat her. And one day she was in the hospital. The paramedics had to take her. Because she was beaten so bad, she was knocked out. And they thought she had died, but she hadn't yet. They took her to the hospital. The doctors, the nurses, the surgeons, they shook their heads when they saw the damage that had been done to her body. They could see that she was literally dying from internal injuries, from massive abuse, from extreme cruel beatings. I mean, just senseless beatings. Not having enough salt on the greens not being uh, satisfied with the way the, the Kool-Aid was mixed. Stupid stuff. But that's what she was so entangled with. She couldn't let it go. It really had a hold on her. She couldn't let it go. As sick of it as she was, she couldn't let it go. She couldn't picture her life without this. It became her reality. And she sought it yet again. And she would beg to stay. And she sought it yet again. And she sought it yet again. Just like Proverbs 23, verse 35. Thou hast stricken me. I was not sick. They have beaten me. And I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. And she did it again and again and again. And he beat her again and again and again. And she sought it again and again and again. And she died. Ten days in the hospital, she slowly died from massive internal bleeding, internal injuries, all kind of damage done to her organs as they broke down. Her body couldn't take any more. But guess what? Had she lived, she would have sought it yet again. Because her mind couldn't let her go free. That was her lot in life, to be there with her man. <sighs> what is your lot in life? What do you expect out of your life? All of the sacrifices, all of the love, all of the stuff that you're dishing out. For what? What are you going to get in return? That is not what God refers to as the abundant life. Do you really consider that living? 